As they say, if you heard the bird, you weren't the target. That's the iconic A-10 Thunderbolt II, a subsonic attack aircraft developed for the U.S. Air Force and in service since 1976. What truly stands out is its design, built around a massive 30mm Gatling-style autocannon. Just look at the size of that beast. Its rounds slice through armored vehicles like butter. The secret lies in its depleted uranium ammunition. But what makes it so effective? And doesn't that uranium turn the weapon into a cancer cannon? The A-10, also known as the Warthog, was designed specifically for close air support, excelling in low-speed, low-altitude flyovers with exceptional maneuverability. It was designed to attack all types of ground targets, but especially tanks. It usually flies at a relatively low speed of 420 miles per hour, 676 kilometers per hour, which makes it easier to hit smaller, slower targets. Another key design requirement was the ability to withstand significant damage, critical for low-altitude operations. To protect the pilot and avionics, engineers installed a titanium bathtub beneath the cockpit, open at the top. The aircraft also needed to deliver a massive amount of firepower. It has various attack configurations, with eight underwing and three underfuselage pylon stations. It can carry 500 pounds Mark 82 and 2,000 pounds Mark 84 bombs, incendiary cluster bombs, AM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, and AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles, widely used against bunkers and tanks. It can also deploy laser or GPS-guided bombs, laser-guided and unguided rockets, infrared countermeasure flares, electronic countermeasures, and more. but the aircraft was basically built around a massive 30mm, 7-barrel rotary cannon mounted in the nose, the GAU-8A Avenger. The front landing gear was even shifted slightly to the right to allow the cannon to be mounted in the center. In fact, the cannon is positioned slightly to the left, so that the barrel currently firing, out of the 7, is aligned with the center of the aircraft. The entire system takes up a significant portion of the front section and weighs 4,000 pounds, 1.8 tons. It boasts an impressive firing rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. With a typical load of 1174 rounds, it could empty its drum in just 17.6 seconds. However, due to overheating, the gun must fire in bursts of 2 to 3 seconds each, which helps extend the lifespan of the barrels. Each burst consists of about 120 rounds, allowing it to hit 9 to 10 targets before running out of ammunition. The cannon is so powerful that its recoil force is 45 kilonewtons, which is greater than the thrust produced by each of the two engines at 40.3 kilonewtons. This is enough to reduce the aircraft's speed, but since the bursts only last a few seconds, it doesn't cause a stall. In the A-10, spent casings are not ejected like in other aircraft. Instead, they are cycled back into the drum. This prevents the aircraft's center of gravity from shifting too much and also keeps the casings from being sucked into the engines. The cartridges are massive, measuring 11.4 inches in length, 29 centimeters. The projectile itself, which is the part actually fired, has a diameter of 30 millimeters. These rounds can be either armor-piercing or highly explosive, both of which are incendiary. Additionally, there is another type designed specifically for target practice. Explosive ammunition is used against targets with less resistance, such as trucks, supply depots, or even soldiers. Armor-piercing rounds, which do not contain explosives, are used against armored combat vehicles. The cannon is usually loaded with a mix of ammunition, starting with a high explosive round followed by five armor-piercing ones. The first round also serves as a tracer to assist the pilot in aiming. What I wanted to emphasize, however, is this armor-piercing projectile, capable of penetrating even a modern battle tank, such as the powerful T-90, if it strikes the right spot and angle, specifically the top or rear of the vehicle. In February 2022, the U.S. Air Force tested the A-10's cannon with armor-piercing projectile against modern tanks equipped with explosive reactive armor, rendering them inoperative after the attack. Since this type of projectile relies solely on the force of impact to penetrate armor, rather than internal explosives, it is less susceptible to active protection systems and explosive reactive armor. The penetration effectiveness also depends on the distance and the aircraft's angle of attack. At a 30-degree angle, it can penetrate up to 64 millimeters of steel armor from half a mile away. And if you consider that multiple projectiles are likely to hit the same area, the penetration can be significantly higher. The secret to its impressive penetration power lies in the projectile's core. It features a lightweight aluminum body molded around a smaller caliber depleted uranium penetrator core. The aluminum portion provides the projectile's aerodynamic shape and typically does not penetrate the target. Depleted uranium is also used by several other vehicles, such as those in the M1 Abrams series, both in their kinetic ammunition and as components of their armor. 
It is obtained as a byproduct of uranium enrichment for use in applications such as nuclear power plants. This residual material does not directly contribute to the fission process. It consists of natural uranium with a low concentration of the isotope U-235, meaning it is almost entirely U-238. The difference between them lies in the number of neutrons in the atom's nucleus. But doesn't the radiation from this uranium projectile harm its own crew? Depleted uranium is only a weak emitter of alpha particles, which are easily blocked by the outermost layers of human skin, clothing, or even a coat of paint. But why is it used? There are three main reasons. The first is that it's an excellent penetrating material, primarily due to two specific characteristics. One is its exceptional density, 69% greater than that of lead. Combined with the projectile's high initial velocity of 1,036 meters per second, this results in enormous kinetic energy and a high penetration capacity. But uranium's density is practically the same as tungsten's. In fact, it's even slightly lower. Yet its penetration capability is significantly superior. This is due to another characteristic. When the penetrating material hits the target, its surface temperature rises dramatically. Since uranium has a relatively low melting point of 2,075 Fahrenheit, the metal softens, causing parts of its surface around the projectile to flake off. This helps it maintain a sharper, more pointed shape. Tungsten, on the other hand, has a much higher melting point of 6,177 Fahrenheit, so these surface pieces don't flake off as easily. Instead, it forms a rounded tip, creating a mushroom effect that reduces its penetration capability. Uranium isn't as hard as tungsten, but this is improved by alloying it with 0.75% titanium and reducing its carbon content. The second reason is that uranium is also highly pyrophoric. When in the form of fine particles, it reacts with air and ignites spontaneously. This happens as it fragments during the penetration of armor. This creates a secondary incendiary effect without the need to add any other explosive material to the projectile. This characteristic makes it highly effective as it increases the likelihood of fuel or ammunition exploding inside the vehicle. Lastly, since depleted uranium is a byproduct of nuclear fuel production and the United States has numerous nuclear power plants, the material's stockpile is quite large, making it significantly cheaper than tungsten, essentially almost free. Tungsten, on the other hand, is supplied almost entirely by China. It all seems great, but there's a big problem. Unlike a bomb, the automatic cannon is supposed to be a low collateral damage weapon. Take a look at the accuracy of this attack, even with the vehicle in motion. Props to the pilot. However, the fragmentation and combustion of the projectile cause depleted uranium particles to disperse into the environment, contaminating the air, water, and soil. These particles can be inhaled or ingested. As a carcinogenic element, it can lead to chemical poisoning of civilians over the years. In Iraq, for example, where the United States used large volumes of this type of ammunition between 1991 and 2003, there have been reports of an increase in certain types of birth defects in newborns and higher rates of cancer. In the Kosovo region, cases of cervical cancer have increased. During Operation Allied Force in 1999, over 31,000 armor-piercing rounds were fired from the A-10. Each projectile contains approximately 300 grams of depleted uranium, amounting to over 9 tons in total. There are also reports of increased micronucleus formation in people from Bosnia and Herzegovina, where 11,000 rounds were fired by A-10 cannons between 1994 and 1995. Even among American soldiers, there are numerous indications linking depleted uranium exposure to Gulf War syndrome in some veterans. These are just a few of the reports and studies. The US government claims there is no conclusive evidence, which is true. However, this is largely because many of the areas where these munitions were used are in ongoing conflict, hindering access and preventing comprehensive long-term studies on their effects. This does not mean that such evidence doesn't exist. The Air Force has been studying the use of projectiles with alternative penetrator materials for years. The Dutch goalkeeper SeaWiz, a short-range defense system for ships, uses the same cannon and type of ammunition, but features a tungsten carbide penetrator. However, as we've seen, its penetration capability is not as effective. It is not pyrophoric, meaning it doesn't ignite, and depleted uranium is basically free and more readily available, since it is a byproduct of nuclear fuel production. So an extremely efficient yet highly controversial projectile. What do you think? Will the A-10 continue using this type of ammunition for many more years? Thank you for your company and until next time.